don't know when it is running. Ooh. Production. Yeah, production is not easy. All right, 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 all by movie night with filmmaker Annalise Cleopatra Smith. On Saturday, we had a ball with host Carla Hill and guest artist Sweet Shells, Groovy Soka Monarch, College Boy Jesse and Trinidad and Tobago Prison Services Band. It was a blast. Today, we have decided to do, no, I, I missed one day. On Sunday, we had a service with Father Ward, Horace Ward at Holy Family Church, Episcopal Church in Fort Lauderdale. And not Fort Lauderdale, Miami. And that too, incorporated the independence with steel pan celebration, song and dance. And today we wrap up with a cultural conversation about our culture, our Trinidad and Tobago. The topic of discussion is Calypso, Soka and steel pan, the bridges in our culture. The question is, why are we doing this? Actually, the question is, how can we sustain our cultural connections among Trinidad and Tobago diaspora? That's the question. Our statement is this, our culture in Trinidad and Tobago is steeped in Caribbean carnival and has been exported to various corners of the earth. Here are some numbers. There are 27 cities currently hosting registered youth carnivals in the USA. Six cities in Canada, five in the UK, four in France, and one in the Netherlands. This is just to name a few. It is amazing that there is insufficient connections with TNT organizations and these celebrations around the world. How many of us in this room can name five to six of these carnivals, Caribbean carnivals outside of Trinidad and Tobago off the top of our head? With that being said, Calypso, Soka, and Steel Pan being the foundation of, Car of the Caribbean carnival originating in Trinidad and Tobago as we know it today, and influencing these celebrations around the world have some identifiable connection. Everyone knows that reggae music is a Jamaican art form, just as blues and jazz is established, is an established Black American musical for, art form or originating in New Orleans. Somehow, Trinidad and Tobago's role and connections are lost in translation. We must create and maintain sustainable connections with our, within our culture that can be accomplished through forums such as this. Our goal in this forum is to create sustainable cultural connections across the Trinidad and Tobago diaspora. I'm going to say it one more time. Welcome to TNT Town Hall, our Caribbean connection. Thank you. Um, I would like to continue. Well, I'll let Maureen go ahead and just briefly introduce everyone who's here. And to you, the diaspora who's viewing this, please share this on your pages, share and like it, 
go in and support TTIBC and our efforts to bridge the cultural connections across the diaspora. Very good. Okay. So I'd like to introduce everyone on our panel tonight, starting with, I like ladies first. I'm still at um, Ms. Carla Paris, uh, attorney and sports, sports entertainment and um, intellectual. intellectual properties attorney. Ms. Joanne Rowley, or better known as Tigris, a legendary soap, uh, kind of soul artist for Trinidad and Tobago. Mr. Ian Smart, is, uh, Isidore Smart, um, professor and um, uh, alum of Howard University, along with also being an established and published author. Mr. Mike Andrews, a uh, radio personality who has been serving the South Florida pop, um, diaspora Here. for the last 32 plus years, and His Excellency, Mr. Anthony W.J. Phillips Spencer of Trinidad and Tobago. I'd like to take this time to welcome all of you, and thank, thank you. you very much for participating. Um, thank you, thank you. I would like to invite Mr. The, uh, His Excellency Anthony Phillips Spencer to start off with uh, an address. Good evening, everyone. And let me begin by extending happy 50th Independence Day anniversary greetings to all the members of our, of our diaspora across the United States. On behalf of the government and people of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, and our embassy to the United States of America, located, as you might be aware, you should be aware, here in Washington, DC. And you know, the United States for us is our most enduring partner nation in pursuit of our destiny. I extend congratulations and best wishes to all our citizens and nationals in our diaspora community here in the United States. This year, Trinidad and Tobago commemorates the anniversary of its independence as a sovereign nation and as a native land of a diverse people, who all aspire to an equal place amidst a combination of uncertainty and opportunity. Uncertainty caused by the global socioeconomic reality of the COVID-19 pandemic and opportunity confirmed only three weeks ago before this year's independence anniversary by another peaceful and purposeful display of our strength as a national democracy and as reaffirmation of confidence in our government. Both the persisting uncertainty of our global reality and the prevailing opportunity of our strong national democracy inspire us to invoke the unity of purpose called for in our national motto, to aspire together and to achieve together. The basis for our unity of purpose and our unity as patriots is also prescribed for us in the words of our national anthem. Our unity as a diverse polity, creative economy, strong democracy, an equitable society, is based on our, and I quote, boundless faith in our destiny, end of quote. As Trinidad and Tobago adapts to the contemporary global reality, we, its citizens and nationals, young and mature, at home and abroad, must remain hopeful and prayerful as we pursue our united and fervent faith in our destiny. That unity of purpose, the, rather, that unity of faith, bears the promise and purpose that as we aspire together, we will achieve our national priorities of sustainable development, economic diversification, digital transformation, and social protection. Today, as we reaffirm our commitment to our national motto, together we aspire, together we achieve, may the fires of hope and prayer heralded in our national anthem continue to inspire our unity in patriotism and national purpose. 
Happy Independence Day, and may God bless our beloved nation, the beautiful Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. God bless you. Stay here. Stay here. Thank you very much, Madam Chairperson. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so tonight as we go along, as we begin our, our town hall, I would like to throw out our first question. How do we continue to be gatekeepers of these art forms? In saying that, we did talk about a number of art forms. We talk about the steam pan, we talk about calypso, we talk about uh, soca. We talk about them in the terms of them being a bridge in our culture. And we know they've formed many bridges, bridges such as, as the storytellers. We, we listen to extempo over the years. We've listened to, we have seen bridges such as uh, one of our panelists, Ms. Ms. Rowley, um, break through an uh, art form that has been predominant in, early, in the earlier years that was predominantly male. And other bridges such as politics, you know, um, it has been used as a form of an editorial for our, for our, for our culture. So the question. the question is, how can we, sorry, I just lost it. How can we no, no. Yeah. How can we continue to be the gatekeepers of these art forms? Um, Ian. Ian? <clears throat> okay, thanks for the <clears throat> thanks for the opportunity to, to respond. Um, I'm gonna combine the, the question one with question two, which is let us identify some of the barriers. Uh, <clears throat> because the principal barrier is that uh, we don't really have a, a complete understanding of our culture and we need to we need to understand it and know where it came from and appreciate its worth appreciate its worth we don't really we haven't really done that <clears throat> um uh, we need um, of course we need to be congratulated in terms of carnival we need to be congratulated in trinidad and tobago for remaining faithful to the to the to the tradition the carnival tradition we are, the, we are probably the people in the, uh, we, are, we are probably the site where, the, where there's the greatest fidelity to that tradition. And we need to congratulate ourselves by appreciating our culture, by appreciating that, that this carnival comes directly from Kemet, from the Nile Valley. <laughs> we, the, the, um, like, like all civilization comes from there. In our book, um, 2000, which was a, a comeback from perspective on the Trinidad and Tobago carnival, we showed that we made that strong argument. <clears throat> um, we so we need to um, we need to um, you know to, to to dig deeply into in, in, into the facts, into the scholarship, in order to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery. Um, <clears throat> none but ourselves can free our minds. And and um, Ma Bob Marley spoke of the spoke of the prophets. How long will they kill our prophets um, while we stand outside and look? <clears throat> Well, well, what what we do with our scholars, our Afrocentric scholars, we are not we're not prophets, but we are we are we are we are, we are, we are a form of prophet and and a kind of prophet, a secular prophet, I guess you could say, and 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 they do kill us. Um, the prime example of that is um is when I say kill us, kill us sort of um professionally. Um, mm -hmm. um Ivan Van Sertima from from um, Guyana. With the, they came before Columbus. He has been blackballed. That book came out in '76. He already was an associate professor, but they, he never, they never allowed him to rise any higher than that. So he died as an associate professor, not a full professor. After you know, after all, because he dared, he dared to stand up to be a prophet. And 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 we and we have to, you know, we have to. When we begin to appreciate our um, our culture, then we begin to. To, to, to remove the uh, uh, remove the barriers. One of the, uh, one of the barriers is one of the barriers is I think a kind of um a kind of um uh, chauvinism, a kind, an idea that that you know the carnival is reading <coughs> um and and we invented it. No, it's not. We 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 have been most faithful to 
the carnival tradition, yes. But we didn't invent it. It came from his hands down just by our ancestors. And once we appreciate it and and then then we begin to we begin to work with with our African brothers and sisters throughout, throughout the world. There were two of 1.5 billion of us in the world. And we begin to begin to then then big up our carnival in a proper way. So I, I, that was those are my reflections. By the way, one thing I was introduced as an alum of Howard University. Um, I'm not that fortunate. It is Kamala Kamala Harris is an alum of Howard University. Um, <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I did my um I did my work at the University of National uh, University College Dublin, then the National Autonomous University of Mexico in Mexico City, and then UCLA. And I came to okay. Howard a professor in seventy seven. Thanks. Thank okay. you. Carla, how, um, how, how do you think we could continue being um, the gatekeepers of, this, uh, of these art forms? Uh, I'm going to take a sort of a practical approach to answering that question. And I think that um, you could, we can become the gatekeepers of our culture, I think, by recognizing the persons who are, have taken the burden upon themselves of uh, investing in the art form. So what I mean by that are our artists, our filmmakers, our the persons on the ground floor who are creating, you know, the mass, so to speak, the carnival band designers and leaders. When I don't think that on any governmental level, whether it be in Trinidad, in Barbados, or any of the cultural organizations, anywhere really, do we actually financially invest and create programs where persons who are at the helm can understand the business-related aspects of what they are doing. So if they're not able to actually understand how to generate revenue, how to market, and how to promote these various tools, then how is anybody globally going to understand and even recognize what they are creating? Mm -hmm. So, for example, you know, yesterday I watched this lovely tribute to Chadwick Boseman, who passed away. And of course, we all know all the great work that he's done with Black Panther and all these movies. But one thing that I really found that stood out to me was that he said that he would not have been able to have produced the content that he did had Denzel Washington years ago not invested in him through a scholarship which he provided, which allowed him to go to university and fulfill his ambitions. So the question is, are we adequately investing in these artisans so that they can produce quality products, which, as I said, we can produce and market and sort of show to the world. Generally, we treat the art form as sort of a side hobby, as a passion. We look at artists and so forth, and we want to use them for some sort of cultural festival. But other than that, the areas are not looked upon with any sort of great understanding of the worth to our economy. Thank you. Um, Tigress, when I think of this question, I'm thinking of you as a stakeholder, as a, um, uh, no, a trailblazer, because you came along at a time when, as I said before, when this art, when these art forms were predominantly male. And to make that breakthrough to, uh, into this arena, how difficult was it for you? I would have to say good evening, everyone, again, and to all nationals locked on and listening, happy independence to everyone who think they're a Trinidadian by whatever, by <laughs> the way they are too. happy independence. The thing about it is that I always say I came into Calypso at a good time, mm -hmm. a good time in that the real trailblazers was Calypso Rose. Oh, yes. In Francine. Because they had already, as, remember when I got in there, they had already changed it to the Calypso Monarch. It was not the Calypso King anymore because right. Calypso Rose had already won. I met Lady B. I met Marvelous Marva. I met Singing Sandra. I met Singing Diane. So they sort of set it up that there was a little cushion under there for when I came in. It, 
it has gotten way different now. Like, you now don't have to look for women to have the queen show. Now the men complain that there are too many females in the semifinals. But to go back to your initial question, we have something and we don't know how to package it. We don't know how to market it. We don't know how to sell it. Mm. Do we shoot ourselves in our foot at times? Yes, we do. Because if we, I have to say we who are, who horizons have been broadened and we are outside. And like um, Miss Paris was saying just now, if you want to sit down and how are we selling it to the world? Nobody ever sat down. You would go to, to various conferences, to various um, fairs all over. There is never anybody from Trinidad and Tobago. And I have had that happen on diverse occasions. I called the consulate in Florida already and asked, why is there no one here? There is someone from Jamaica. There is someone from Barbados. And they are selling what they have. You have spice masks. They are selling spice masks. How come we have the biggest and the greatest show on earth? And it's still a well-kept secret. Mm. So wow. we, we, the one who hold in the umbrella of the artist, because now I'm on the other side of the fence, but when I jump back to that side of the fence, this is where we have to thank people like Mike Andrews, who will only get a couple of hours to showcase our work. Like I would come to your event and I would sing a song and you would ask me, oh my God, what year did you sing that? And then when I tell you, I sang like about 20 years ago and that happened, um, Miss Maureen, that happened. When you right. told me, that song, what year did you sing that? Again, we don't package it. We have the biggest fiesta, the biggest picnic of Calypso, and it's dying. Yes. Again, we don't, we, somebody needs to bring the blueprint and show us, us as in Trinidad and Tobago, how do we sell us? How do we market us? Until then, we are going to become extinct. So, Mike, with that being yes. said, and you being a radio and media personality, mm -hmm. how effective could, would you say that you have been in selling, uh, or media, really, when I say you, I'm talking about media, how effective do you think the media has been in selling this art, these art forms to the world? Well, the strongest media that sells Trinidad and Tobago art form is the media overseas. Lately, we have WAC Radio in Trinidad that has come on over the last few years and play, you know, promote uh, the local music. But over the years, okay. even before I started, you know, once Carnival is over, that's it for Calypso. That's until, right. Until that's the next Carnival. Uh, we couldn't even play Calypso in Lent long time. I used to get licks for singing Calypso in Lent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. uh, with, the, with the movement of the diaspora to New York in the, from the 60s, 70s, to England, Canada, we overseas had a longing, had a desire to hear Calypso. And, and the strongest market for Calypso and, and local talent is outside of Trinidad. Yes, it is. No one's carnival is over. There's an exodus of all the artists heading to New York and to London and to Miami and to, you know, Washington and Toronto and all over so that they could perform. And those fets are ram crammed with people most of the times. Mm -hmm. we, we have to realize that Calypso is a beautiful art form. And nowadays, we, it's been diluted by, by everybody trying to mix and put everything in it. Nothing wrong with, with a little mixing up, you know, nothing wrong with, with a little mixing of the genres. But they have diluted Calypso now, and you hear in all kinds of different things that are not really Calypso. Mm -hmm. As Tigress said, that everybody is an individual. They're marketing themselves individually, and we don't have a, a one great producer, say, that invest in Calypso and advertise and promote and make sure that these records get to the mainstream media. Um, over the years, I used to get more reggae records in the mail 
than Calypso. When I won the Calypso album, I used to run down to Trinidad and go to Crosby's music. Sometimes I had to buy my own music. And I would see artists and say, can I get your record to play on the radio? And I have to chase them down sometimes to get music to play. I mean, in the meantime, all kind of reggae records is coming to me in the mail because you know I'm on the radio mm. and my format is mostly Calypso. But I would be getting more reggae records than Calypso in the mail. So we don't promote it. And we have to understand that Calypso is a culture. It's not reggae, it's Calypso. So let's strengthen the, the culture of Calypso and, and, and promote. We have a lot of great young artists. Let's get them in the right direction and let them follow in the footsteps of the great, you know, Roaring Lion. In the, in, the, in the early 20s, 30s, Calypso was, was boss in, in, um, in, in Harlem. Calypso was sung at, at, in, in, in New York all over. Calypso was sung for the Queen. Mm -hmm. Calypso was at Carnegie Hall. You don't find those things anymore. Nope. So, um, Mike and Tigress, mm -hmm. I have one minute each for you guys with a follow-up question. This is Francina Smith, the president of the organization. In consideration of what you both have said, which is quite so, what suggestion would you give and to whom would you give it in order to export our culture the way it should be? And I want to add one thing to the culture is tourism. We, I, can, I cannot ever remember seeing an ad on the TV talking about our beautiful island of Tobago, the beautiful beaches that we have in Trinidad and Tobago. I've never seen an ad on that. So who would you suggest that can correct this situation? Hmm. Don't get me started. <laughs> you have a minute. Well, we'll ask, we'll Listen, ask for first. Over, no, over the years, for over the years, I've met with various ministers of tourism or head of the tourism, like Ted Coy was Ted Coy at one time, mm -hmm. suggesting all those things about marketing, and especially marketing to the diaspora. Okay, so you don't want to spend money in the, in the American market or the overall market. But the diaspora, for example, is a very strong market for tourism. All of us want to go back home. Many of us left Trinidad and Tobago and did not go to all the tourist spots when we were there. You know how that goes. But now that we live away, we would like to go to the Asa Wright uh, um, bird, bird Sanctuary. We'd love to go to the Pitch Lake. Many Trinidadians have never been to Tobago. I mean, who live abroad? They've never been to Tobago. Mm -hmm. And when I go to Tobago and come back and talk about it in my radio program, Many people come back and say, Mike, I heard you, and I went to the bagel for the first time. It was everything you said it was. So the tourism, now we have the, the ministry's link, tourism and, and culture in the, in the new cabinet. Now it is linked. So they have to start to understand that they are both linked because we cannot compete with Barbados and Jamaica for beaches, especially in Trinidad, maybe Tobago, but not in Trinidad per se. We cannot compete in terms of resorts. So now is the time to promote our culture, the beautiful music of Calypso, Calypso jazz and Chutney and Shango and all the other beautiful music that we have and the culture and bring in um, visitors to the islands with music festivals, for example. Years ago, there was a world music festival in the Queen's Park, Savannah. Hugh Masakila was there. I think they only had it one year and that was it. These kind of things should be going on all the time. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Tigers. I, if I have to, if I am asked to approach someone, I would approach the ministry and like Mike said, it was so good that they joined them. I would approach the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. I have been to various outlets on the outside. If I go to Washington right now, they have, no, they have nothing to give me. If I tell them I am going before 15 people and I need some, some paperwork, some pamphlet, something, there is nothing. We have to start from there. We have, and that's the only way we could bring it on the outside because we do have these consulates and, and uh, embassies on the outside. But we don't have it at home either. 
when you are leaving, for all the people that would come, the, for Mike will take five people with him because this is how people go. Uh, Maureen will take two people. Julian, you will take two people who work with you. That's how we take people. Um, Miss Paris there would, would, would have been networking. She would have told somebody. And that's how we do it. But no, the ministry, like I argue with Tuco all the time, they are the body for Calypso. But what do you do for Calypso? If you call the office and you ask, could I have so-and-so? Um, I don't have a number for this one. We need to get better about it. We have to market us or else we are going to lose it. We are losing it when you come to the tent and you are dressed and you come out there and the tent is not packed anymore. We mm -hmm. are losing it. We are yes. losing it. Then you have the, the, the people on the side that would take two in this one and two in that one and make a ladies night out and make, or make a male, uh, uh, female. And they take that now and they package that just as how they could package that and fill that show. Let us package us and fill up our arenas. There is a, there is a carnival village. Nobody goes there. Again, it's a well-kept secret. We could yes. do that really good. Carla, it's really good. Right. Carla, mm -hmm. I'd like you to jump in here because this tends, this has a little bit to do with what you are talking about with the right. business of carnival. And, yeah. and they are touching on it in this sense. Could you help us out there with some, you help us a little bit again? Well, I mean, my perspective in terms of the relationship, I think, between what you all have been talking about, Ministry of Culture and Tourism and so forth, is that I actually don't really think that it's solely the job of the government or government governmental agencies to promote culture. I think that it should be in tandem with the persons on the ground floor who in reality are the ones who are doing the work and are, are marketing us quite well. So, for example, you know, we have DJs like DJ Private Ryan, you know, who has a fat called Soka Brainwash. That fat has been exported throughout the Caribbean and diaspora. We have people like Jules Sobian, you know, who have uh, very well-known fats like Caesar Zami fats and whatnot that are in probably every carnival, Barbados, and so forth, uh, diaspora, Toronto, whatnot, and many others, who I think um, are doing quite a good job of marketing us, and, and people know that these are Trinidadians doing well. I think what's not happening as well as it should be is the linkage between these government agencies and these stakeholders to help them with whatever tools and machinery they need to continue the promotion. It does happen now on some level. So for example, now, because we've gone digital, I know that the Tourism Trinidad Limited, which is an agency under the Ministry of, well, the then Ministry of Tourism, they are doing a lot of online social media campaigns with a lot of the younger artists like Nyla Blackman uh, to help promote Trinidad and Tobago. They have visit Trinidad uh, slogans and marketing pitches that are happening throughout. So, so the interplay is happening. The question, like I said, is, you know, how well is it being done and how often is it being done? And is it being done with an understanding that these are business tools that need to be promoted and packaged um, you know, globally. Mm -hmm. so, that, so your question in terms of the what I'm doing with the show, I mean, that is exact, exactly the point of the episode. They're, they're talking to persons, um, you know, who are at the helm of carnival in photography and film and fashion. And that's the other thing. When we talk about carnival, I think people tend to just look at it as this one um, aspect of it, which is like the bikini and beads or, or Calypso or Stoker. But the reality is it's full of so many different facets. There's photography, videography, there's, there's fashion, there's design, you know. And these areas need to be looked at separately as well as collectively to understand who the players are, what are they doing, what do they need, and then how can these government agencies work with these players to, to, to help get us to the next level. That's, that's why mm -hmm. I feel. Mm -hmm. Hi, Alison. Yes, Alison has a question for okay. you. Um, Honorable Anthony Philip Spencer, what, what is your input or what is your take as a government official mm. on this, on, 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 on this aspect of it? How influential 
should a government be or are governments, other governments, helpful in promoting, um, in promoting the culture and sending it out there and protecting it? Sure. Well, thanks very much for giving me an opportunity to add to all of the value that has already been delivered. And I took some notes. I noted, for instance, the reference to the need to make sure we bring back the idea of the cultural attache um, and several other comments made. You know, as I listened, the key point that jumped out to me was the issue of self-validation. And I think Professor Smart effectively described that as a critical requirement. And the issue is that the value, the validation, the self-validation of our culture Mm -hmm. has to be expressed in terms of government-to-government -government diplomacy, business-to-business -business diplomacy, and people-to-people -people diplomacy. And I think that's the point that Carlo was trying to get across, that the ministry has a responsibility on you. So the prime minister in the, in the designations in the new cabinet made, and in fact, he described it. He explained why he had done it. Mm -hmm. He bridged tourism and the arts by culture. What 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 really was done in that decision by the Prime Minister was to highlight the value, economic value, yes, mm -hmm. that business-to-business -business value, that people-to-people -people value. And of course, as a country, um, all countries love to export your culture. Um, we have done and have had many cultural events across the USA, but, you know, we haven't got the... the the marketing reach that we would love to have. I have been encouraging our diaspora associations across the US to come together and to recognize that much of what can be done to advance our culture um, depends more on the diaspora than the embassy. This is the four-step approach the embassy has been taking while I've been here. We have sought to represent and relate our culture. But some people just don't know. Some people don't know that the steel pan was invented in Trinidad and Tobago. But beyond that, we then had to engage people who we started relating to and educate them. And that's also a critical requirement. The challenge is that some of us haven't even taken time ourselves as a people to get our own education of our culture. So we find ourselves unable to do that education. Once we've done that, then it is up to us to really advocate to keep talking, keep speaking about and advancing our cultural value to the world. Um, I, when you were calling the list of carnivals, I didn't hear you call those in Germany. My brother goes to, to he goes to about three carnivals in Germany. Okay, no. Every year, well, no COVID this year, so poor fellow, I know you're out of sorts these days. <laughs> yeah. um, and then finally, that's how we could promote and then protect our culture. Um, in the current environment of openness and 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 and, and um, having to work together, and the, ubiqu the ubiquitous nature of the internet, and you know, if you put something out online, it could go wherever. We have to rethink as well the concept of gatekeeper, mm -hmm. and we need to acknowledge that really and truly now, barriers need not exist unless we seek to establish them in an environment where they're not being tolerated. Information is traveling wherever, however, and as a culture, and given our own culture, we have so much to offer to the world. Do you realize that our Calypsonians, like our dear sister, Duan, they produce more music per annum, per capita, than any other genre of music? Now, if we acknowledge that as a people. We must then be able to go and promote that. And I think that um, we, have some, we have some work to do. There's no question about it. I'm grateful for the insights that, that was shared. And I look forward while I'm here to carry the messages back to capital and also to engage more with you because I think as we bring our diaspora together in the US, we could advance our culture even more. But I go back to the first base and first requirement, self-validation we need to value ourselves and our own culture and what we have to offer to do. Sorry I took that long, but engage in discussion. Thank you.
Thank you. Thank you. Um, so um, you said a few things in there. You talked about business to business diplomacy, people to people diplomacy. Um, I have a question because we're talking about carnival culture, and soon we're gonna have college boy Jesse, the Ruby Soka Monarch for 2020 mm -hmm. coming here. The mm -hmm. only time you got to perform for a carnival was this year in Trinidad and Tobago. So the question I'm going to ask you guys is, and when I think you wrote the question down, and I, I, I'm, I'm gonna see if I can remember it, that in post-pandemic Trinidad and Tobago, post-pandemic carnival, how do we pivot to make this carnival thing work for us on a financial level, on a marketing level? Because uh, College Boy Jesse did a beautiful video for us, and he, we showed it on Saturday, where he talked about how many years it led up to him getting on the stage. And we'll get to talk to him in a few minutes. And boom, COVID happened. First time getting on the stage, as a Goofy Soka artist, because he worked in the background with other artists. How do we do this thing post-pandemic? How does Trinidad move forward? I'm going to pitch it to Carla, because I know you have to leave in just a few moments. Yeah. Well, I think to answer your question, how do we pivot? The pivot is already happening. In fact, it's happening right now in real time. So uh, half an hour ago, Cast launched his newest album, on multiple platforms that it's currently streaming. So it's being shown on TV6 in Trinidad. It's live now on YouTube. It's on another platform. So the question of how do we pivot isn't really, I think, the question. The question is how do we commercialize and protect what we are pivoting? Because all these artists are jumping online. They're giving us live streams. They're giving us um, you know, music in their backyard, in their, their homes, and whatever. But how are we actually, as I said, commercializing and protecting that as they go online? Um, and I think one of the challenges that has historically affected us, not just in Trinidad, but in on all of the carnival organizations globally, is the persons, quite frankly, who we have at the helm of these organizations are very passionate about culture, they're passionate about music, they're passionate about art, but they're not passionate about bringing on people who understand just what I said business and also the question of intellectual property law, copyright law, trademark law. Because without these tools of the art and the law working together, we can't protect anything. Because what we have uh, most of the, all of the years, at least as long as I've been around and in this industry, we are putting together stage shows for, you know, Dimash Graf, Isoka Monarch, and, and whatever else. But we're not actually kind of helping the artists to understand when you put this song online or you produce this song and you perform it in effect globally, are you collecting the royalties from that? Where are the lawyers that are working together with you? We don't promote that aspect. Or where are your managers who are helping you to enter into proper endorsement deals, distribution deals? That aspect is not pushed. So unless we get serious and understand the interconnectivity of persons and skill sets that are needed, we aren't going to be really pivoting to anything of meaning. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Tigress. We appreciate it. Tigress, how does the Calypsonian pivot? Because we know that Calypso is almost a dying art form, right? You spoke about the half empty um, Calypso tents. But that and, die. you know, how do, how does. I was just Calypso about to say pivot? it's not, it's not dying. It's not dying. No, 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 no. <laughs> but no, well, I'm saying based on what you said, based on what you said, said the half empty tents. Uh -huh. the, the, tents, the audience isn't there like it was. So there's Jesse. Hi, Jesse. This college boy Jesse. All right. How how do how does the calypso pivot? Because Soka has sort of like pushed calypso off to the side. And people know calypso, but they think calypso is soca. If it, people know um, dancehall and reggae are not the same. But they don't know that soca and calypso are not necessarily the same. So how does calypso? That's pivot? arguable. That's arguable, you know. 
<laughs> go ahead, Tigers. Go ahead, Tigers. Go ahead. It's arguable for the older <laughs> Trinidadian, but not the younger one. <laughs> they think it's all the same. Me, I think children. The younger ones pay no attention to Calypso. Right. None whatsoever. Yeah. Except they those who are singing in competition. To either. They don't. They pay attention because they go to the fets and all like that. But the background of it and the elevation of it, they don't really pay attention to that. They don't. One might beg to differ, but that's just my view and my take on it. Calypso is not dying. What is dying is the promotion of it. That's, that's the aspect of it that's dying. Calypso is not dying. Calypso is, in, and if you were to go to the Savannah, to the junior Calypso monarch, and you would hear some Calypsos that are better than those that are even in the tent. So you would know that Calypso is not dying. How do we market it? Because like there was a time it was, but the thing has changed hand. It is almost like if it's the circle of life for Calypso. Because there was one time where the, the, the steel pan used to rely on the Calypsonian for a song. Okay, then the, band, then the bands came out. So the band singer had a song. Mm -hmm. Then that changed. Now the DJs have a song. Mm -hmm. So you don't even, so the whole thing, the whole cycle is changing. But it's how are we ready to move with the cycle? That is where we have to get serious. How That's a pivot. That's a pivot. Yes, how are we moving with it? How are we moving with the time? I would still continue to do my Calypso. Of course, you could jump over in Soka like we did. You could always jump over, but I always remain committed to, the, to my first love, which is... We just have to merge both of them. Do we merge both of them? No, we don't. No, we don't. But then it's only what you are given. And that's what you are given. You are given that Calypso is too slow. You are given that Calypso is backward. And that's what you are given. And you could only eat what is presented before you. So it is my, all my, Let me jump in. Let me jump in here. Come on. My take on that is that Soka is Calypso. It Calypso is. Is, is, is the art form. Soka is a derivative of Calypso. Because there are some Soka songs that you can easily say is Calypso based on that identity that they're given it. And mm -hmm. likewise, there are some Calypso songs or Calypsos that you could easily say Soka based on the criteria you're putting them in. So I don't like, I hear people do that. I don't like to separate Calypso and Soka. Calypso is the, the art form, is the mother. Soka is a form of Calypso. I could go on, but let's, uh, let me hear what Ian has to say about that. Yes, Ian. Ian, we'd no. like to hear your historical um, <laughs> point of view on that. I was just thinking of what some, some, I get back to my point um, that, that we need to understand what we have or appreciate it. And, and until, unless we understand and appreciate it, we, we can't really profit from it. Um, we, we, can, we, can, we can help. What, what Carla is doing is absolutely essential, but we, we can be, we can, her work can be more effective if we understood what, what, what we have and appreciated what we have. For example, the, here we are talking about Calypso. <clears throat> we don't understand that, that the real thing is Kaiso, which is what, which, is, which, which was the, the term of, um, of approval that people voiced when, um, when, when a good Kaiso was sung. It's a Kaiso, Kaiso. But then the, the people who control our culture, the, <laughs> who think they, they're superior to us, came along and said, look, Kaiso, you know, that's so that's so lower class. Why don't we say Calypso? <clears throat> because Calypso comes from the Greeks or the name of some Greek god or something like that. <laughs> so that's the kind of perversion that goes in our culture that that that, that we that we need to clarify <clears throat> before we can really profit from it. <clears throat> um you're talking about Soka and Kaiso. <clears throat> Look, <clears throat> again, if we understood, if if we put this thing on a sort of global perspective, <clears throat> um there's no difference between a uh, kaiso and so it's just a, it's an evolution everything evolves um we find the same thing in in the in the in the, in the, in the cultural popular cultural expressions of our of our black sisters and brothers in latin america for example we have these various arts what is rumba what is what is wawanko? what is song what is um what is um the bayonato they all every, every, it's the same thing so slightly different manifestations of the same 
of the same of, of the same genre. So so that's why I, I, it's really really important for us to for us to understand what we have and 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 to, and to emancipate ourselves from the mental slavery imposed by the people who control us. We have to emancipate ourselves from mental slavery and and stop killing our prophets. Um, not not physically, but um, financially, or, 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 or uh, like Carla was. And Carla is the one who helped us to, to stop. Um, Carla, what Carla does will help us to stop killing all. All right, nice. Nigel, I, I want to stop for a moment, pause for a moment, and welcome 2020 Groovy Soka Monarch, Carla's boy Jesse, into the room. Come on, give it up for him. Give it up for him. Thanks, thanks, yeah. And the Soka, the new generation, next generation uh, of, of, of the keeping our culture. Welcome to the Cultural Town Hall. Thank you. Um, thanks for having me. Um, I joined well late, but um, so far the little that I've been hearing, I mean, the information is very good. I like the discussion. I like the direction um, in regards to what we have and how do we take it from here and move it forward. Um, my contribution is I listened to what uh, Tigress was saying in regards to her involvement in Calypso and the importance of, of still being involved in Calypso and, and the fact that the youths kind of strain away from the interest in Calypso. Well, she was saying that there are still youths involved, and yes, there are still youths involved, I mean, in the school competitions and whatnot. But the, the, the friends of the youths involved, I feel like the interest has been lost throughout the years. And it's the same thing that even with soca artists, we are also affected because my peers are also strain away from interest in soca and you know they took towards other genres and um there are numerous things that would cause something like this to happen and for instance with calypso i started off in calypso and then i started doing soca and my peers were not involved in calypso at all and reason being is the method of how we sell the art form throughout the years we, we tend to like lose the new generation because of technology. For instance, now to get music, a lot of the youths would see it on, on, on social media and, and that type of way. Now with Calypso, yes, we have some Calypsos on YouTube, but we, most of the time we would see live performances and very rare we could find like a recording of a Calypso that, that somebody could actually like and want to play in the house or download on the phone and that type of thing. So with not having the art form in those mediums, to, to such um, mediums, um, is that I have you know, been aware of in any in, in little time that I've been involved, and it's something for us to, to take the information from there and then work on means to somewhat connect to our people, you know, to keep it going on for years and years and years. Um, I've been working very close with young Aaron Duncan, and he also having the same challenges. He's now 16 years, he now writes CXC, and his peers, he is so passionate about Calypso and Soka, and his peers are not involved and they have no interest whatsoever in our culture. So he's having the challenge of, you know, trying to keep them involved and to keep the interest there. He, he will go on social media um, once a week, twice a week, and just have Soka playing and then encourage his audience. Like, I mean, he have a couple thousands of, of youths around his age that will come on, and, you know, he's still trying to sell our culture like that to, to him, but he's just one. So, you know, it, it's, a, it, it's, it, it's a tough challenge for him and then also for us to keep the engine rolling and, and to keep our generation involved in our culture, you know? Okay. So that's just... And this is this is France. Thank you, College Boy Je um, Jesse. Jesse. Thank you so much. I have a question for the ambassador, sir. I want to find out: Would it be possible, in all the the towns around in the U.S. where we have an embassy, would it be possible to have a cultural day 
where we can expose our culture to the public, hosted by the Consulate of Trinidad and Tobago. Of course, the diaspora of Trinidad and Tobago would be able to help in such an occasion, but to see that it is led by the Consulate of Trinidad and Tobago. Is that something that be possible sometime in the near future? Right. Um, you know, I go back to the that that four that four cog wheel that I have kept turning. And you're talking about how do we get to promote and protect. So every country has one embassy. Mm -hmm. Our embassy is in Washington, DC. And wherever countries have large populations, that's where they generally locate consulates general. But Trinidad and Tobago, it's obvious. New York and Miami. Um, I think that's an excellent idea. In fact, we at the embassy, as part of our policy mandate of deepening and strengthening our diaspora engagement, we have been reaching out to, to our, our diaspora. And so I would look forward after this um, event tonight to meeting with you and the other diaspora leaders. We have a network now of several diaspora associations. When we have those meetings, we have folks joining from LA, from Minneapolis, from Arizona, well, I can't remember the city, but in Arizona somewhere, um, Texas, um, Austin. We have folks from New York. We have folks from Atlanta, of course, um, Delaware, Baltimore. South Carolina. Um, I know North Carolina, I'm not sure for South Carolina. Right, but someone may have joined, and it's growing because you see. So this is it: a plan, many of which we have made, is not a basis for action. A plan is a basis for organization. Organization is a basis for action, and we need to fix our organization to promote our culture. We need to build capacity. Often. People have taken our creative capacity, what we have created, and they have organized it better than we have. And therefore, they have been able to mobilize all of the profits for their gain. We have to fix that, that gap between there that we don't cross effectively. We have lots of plans, we come up with lots of plans, but a plan without organization is failure. Okay, well, so saying that, mm -hmm. I would like to challenge you this day that this organization, the Trinidad and Tobago Independence Ball Committee, would like very much to interact more with you. So for the South Florida Trinbegonians community, for us to put on some type of cultural affair so that way we can get our diaspora here in South Florida more to interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So definitely, we will be getting back with you after this town hall to ensure that this is something that will be happening in the near future. Is that challenge, okay? accepted, challenge accepted readily because it's a challenge for which we are prepared. By creating the Trinidad and Tobago Diaspora Association's network, network Yes, we have sir. been trying to create a network across the U.S. Yes, sir. But wherever you have your independent organizational impact and events for your local diaspora community, you must be able to do it, be supported, encouraged, promoted by other, other organizations across the U.S. Mm -hmm. Yes? Mm -hmm. Imagine if somebody is traveling from New York and happens to be in Miami on a day when you have an event and they didn't have a clue. That's bad business. It is. We, we have created an annual diaspora calendar, and we're reaching out. We've been begging people, send us and tell us what you're doing, not this year, you want next year. Okay. You have to start. You see, all that is organization. Yes. Communicating yes. what you have, coordinating your events with other associations in the area, so you're not, you're not competing against each other on the same night. Okay. In Washington, mm -hmm. D.C., one point, I got three invitations from three Trinidad and Tobago diaspora associations in the same night, right here in Washington, DC. Those things can't happen. 
we could solve those things. I know Mr. I know Professor Smart is smiling. He was at one of the events in DC. Uh, listen, we have to build. It's hard work. I am committed to working with the diaspora. Our mission is any national has the right to reach out to the embassy. Mm -hmm. There's one embassy. And then our consulates are also closer to you on the ground. So you have the option of reaching to your consulate general in your area or to your embassy. And um, I know you now have all my contacts and I will be pursuing to make sure the embassy gets more engaged and connected with you and so that we could achieve the things that we recognize we need to achieve if we want to move the process forward. Key yes, is sir. organization. Thank you. Organization. Thank you. So, uh, so I'm going to step in and say post-pandemic mm. Trinidad culture will involve the Give me a word, give me a word. I'm looking for the right word here. Yeah. The government agencies and ministries to help promote the culture in the diaspora. That's what I'm hearing. Right. So, so understand, again, I go back to the three arms of promoting our interests and image here. Mm -hmm. Government to government is only one aspect of that effort. Yes. In fact, okay. Government-to-government -government diplomacy now is just about 10% of what actually gets done. Mm -hmm. You've heard something called public diplomacy, and in the broader context of public diplomacy, you've heard of cultural diplomacy. I went mm -hmm. to an event and presented cultural diplomacy awards to Rose, or Nelson, and Ricky Jai. Mm -hmm. And we have been doing that. Now, you might not be aware. I would love to come to... Miami and make similar presentations or have our Consul General in Miami do this thing. So I agree with you. I'm listening. I love to listen. And I hear. And the things that have to be done, we will work at. We need to build our organization and our capacity to promote our own interests and our image. Um, we have to show that we value ourselves and our culture and that we are ready to offer that. Our gift to the world, we have we have given many gifts to the world, a steel pan. I wear a steel pan pin on my lapel almost every day. That's a gift to the world. Mm -hmm. Japan gave to the United States, what? The cherry blossom. Mm -hmm. so the United States gave to Japan baseball. Mm -hmm. You know that? Mm -hmm. We have given the steel pan all over the world. Mm -hmm. And we need to recognize that more and more now, the steel pan is leveraged and mobilized on the backs of people, people to people. I agree with you, the government has a role, 10% of the effort. 90% mm -hmm. is business to business. Another key area we need to get our business, the organization, the business organization engaged and involved in advancing that process. And of course, people to people like you, who are doing exactly excellent um, initiatives like this. Mm -hmm. Your Independence Ball Committee, and I threw it out already, I expect that in the 60th anniversary, you will be holding, hosting the Independence Ball in the U.S. Diaspora. Yes! 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 yes. 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 Maybe taking flights from other part of the U.S. or Diaspora yes. to come mm -hmm. to the ball. Hopefully, post-COVID, we could go back to having events like that. And if not, yes. find a way to do it one way or the other. I want to say something else. And in this in this statement, I'm going to sound like I'm touting my own horn, which I have to at this time. Mm -hmm. I'm the only female Trinidadian or Trinidadian female that hosts three radio shows here in South Florida <laughs> on two stations. Good. I came in to Super Jams Radio and I helped to put, I was very instrumental in putting Super Jams Radio on the FM dial. Good. Congratulations. Thank Good. you. Prior to that, no, actually, yeah, prior to that, I got on the radio with uh, Caribbean Rhythms Radio Show, which follows Mike Andrews' show. And I, this is a the very Caribbean important connection. Point Caribbean Connection. Okay. Now I'm saying this. Our radio shows, and I'm speaking to Mike Andrews' show, because Mike Andrews' show is the premier 
Trinidadian, Trinbagonian radio show in South Florida. Exactly. And Mike Andrews does not have enough support from the Cultural Commission and even the Trinidadian businesses to continue sustaining him. How can the, 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 the agencies support the efforts of Caribbean Connection and also the 303 radio show? We're going to come to you after that. So, you want me to respond now? Yes, please. Yeah, yeah sure. So, in deepening our engagement with the diaspora, we followed three steps. Galvanize, organize, mobilize. You know what's happening? We need to start bringing people together. This event here has brought me together with you. Mm -hmm. And other people who I told about this event, together with you. Mm -hmm. Across the United States, if you look at the diaspora groups that have succeeded, they have found ways to come together. We need to find ways to do that. We don't do it well enough. We need mm -hmm. to start paying attention to our motto. After we've done that, that's when we have to work hard at the organization. Mm -hmm. I have more and more been finding Trinidad and Trinidad-owned businesses mm -hmm. who are now becoming involved and prepared to put the money where their mouth is, as they say, and support um, making sure we could fund. You need the means and the resources to keep things going. And then as you start to mobilize your organizational capacity, all sorts of things could come up and you could do it. We have to improve our capacity to organize ourselves around our culture. <clears throat> and then only then we will be able to move it. But when Professor Smart speaks about it, and when Carla, she's gone, She's here. Right, okay. Yeah, they are they are all encouraging us to build organizational capacity. Give me one minute to share with you this analogy. Your body moves, your hand touches, your feet walk. They cannot do any of those things without organs that are never seen. <laughs> you think your heart could take a five-minute break? I wish. could say, I need a half an hour rest. <laughs> but guess what? You don't see your body's organizational capacity. Mm. And often, because people who are involved in organizing are behind the scenes, mm -hmm. and it's not, not glamorous, Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. To be involved in the bowels of organization is not catchy and people are not attracted there. We have to learn to build that capacity, but we must learn to honor the people who we know are behind the scenes, like you running a program and like Mr. Andrews, running, running, you know, working hard, building capacity for us to be able to, to advance and promote our culture. So um, we need to get the logic right. There's a logic that people have followed mm -hmm. to do this. The Greek-American diaspora here is strong. You know why? Figure it out. The Italian-American diaspora here is strong. You know why? Figure it out. And I know that every now and then we look at the Jamaicans and and, and oh. seem to be getting some things right. OK, I won't talk too much more about My motivation. <laughs> yeah? so let it become inspiration for us. And let's make sure that after tonight, you know, it will never be the same for us going forward. We work together and we'll do better at this. Exactly. Yes. My support here as the ambassador and the embassy. Um, we have become much more engaging. And so we look forward to supporting the effort. 90% of us promoting our interests and image depends on people and business. Yes, Mike, Mike Andrews. I, I, you know, you know how I feel about you. You know how I feel about your programming. You know, mm -hmm. moving from New York to here, you were the station to turn to. You were the voice to hear something familiar from home. So, what do you say uh, your programming needs 
to continue sustainability in, 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 in transmitting messages of culture in this, in this area? What, what any community needs is a strong investment from the business community. Mm -hmm. So the business community, part of it is government, you know, with the grants and, and support in other ways. But then we have the business community that also has to be supportive of the community. You know, most cultures, the grassroots people are the one that carries a the culture. They're the one that, that build and, and, and have the art form going and small organizations and villages and towns small promoters that promote these things. If it wasn't for promoters, individual promoters like myself, I mean, I've done so much shows here, so many shows here in Miami, bringing up people like Shiv Shatki dancers, Malik performers, um, um, Liam Teague, um, um, you know, all the Calypso artists bringing them up here on my own, without support from the business community. Now, from the radio, when you approach business, some of the larger businesses like Carib, for example, that have distribution here, they don't see the value in advertising mm -hmm. on, on the program. Say they don't want to spend money to advertise. They all think that I am doing a good job for the country, and they pat me on the back and say, good job, you're doing a good job for the country, boy. You're doing a good job for the country. But they do not take the money and spend to say, let me advertise Carib. Matooks, for example. Matooks has been in South Florida for a long, long time, and they've never spent okay. one dime in promoting the Matuk products. They think that they will all spread by word of mouth because we love Trini so bad, we are Trini to the bone. So I'm gonna tell you and tell that one, hey, Matuks is available in the grocery, go buy Matuks. And that's what they depend on. My biggest advertiser is a Jamaican company, you know that. And mm -hmm. Jamaican businesses support the Jamaican programs and cultures. They don't hesitate in putting the money mm -hmm. in the culture and big enough themselves. That's what we need. The consulate office here in Miami, Mr. Ambassador, I've spoken to every consulate general, consul general that has been here. Only one has ever spent money on my program and say, well, okay, I'm gonna give you some money to advertise some programs on your, uh, some, some issues on your, on your program. All of them say they don't have the budget. They have to check with Trinidad and they don't have the budget. And I give them all kind of different ideas how they can use my program. They get information out on Trinidad in information on passport issues on different things. And they all say, yes, it's a good idea. But so far, only one consul general has ever said, here is some money to go towards a program. So we need the support of the businesses. We need businesses to invest in the culture and not just wait until an outside groups say, oh, that's good, and then they all want to jump on board. I ran track, and as an athlete growing up, you get no support from businesses until you win a gold medal. Then everybody mm -hmm. wants to support and give you all kind of things. Ask Aisley Crawford about that. Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so so it seems ask, ask your father Lennox. You, Lennox and I ran together. Ask him about that. They don't <laughs> want to support and give nothing until you have a name outside then everybody wants to jump on the bandwagon and say, we support him. It has to change. It has so to start with the grassroots. Yes. Mike, in saying that, I know you have said to me several times, it would be so nice to have a town hall meeting and we, that we are able to discuss certain things to bring the community together. Well, this is something that TTIBC is committed to have a town hall meeting maybe every two months, every quarter, and um, as often as we can, we, with different, a different panel each time in order to bring the community together and to see how we can further assist you in doing the excellent job that you have been doing for us on the radio. And because it's that not, is... That it's not is just me. Uh, it's not just me. It's not just me. No, well, we are talking about you today. I know it's not okay. just you, but we are talking about Mike Andrews today. There are other people that we would be able to help also, <laughs> but just give me the opportunity to give you the accolades that you <laughs> so well deserve at this moment, sir. Yes, okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. 
we, we would continue to have town hall meetings where we'd be able to do better because we have some work to do here in South Florida. We have a lot of work to do because we cannot wait until the last moment that God forbid something happen in Trinidad and we have to help or we have to do certain things and we don't know where the Trinidadians are or the Tobagonians are. So we as a diaspora of Trinidad and Tobago here in South Florida, we have a lot of work to do in bringing us closer, in bringing ideas. And there are other groups here, for instance, the Trinidad Nurses Association. We have at least in the Southwest with the Emancipation Group. We have a lot of groups here that I'm sure would be willing to work together, as the ambassador said, we must work together in order to achieve the same goal. And the goal is loving and supporting Trinidad and Tobago so that we can be proud of where we came from and to give back also to Trinidad and Tobago whenever we can. Does that make sense? Makes sense. Yes. Okay. Um, we want to go to Carla for a moment. Carla has to leave us. And Carla, I'd like you to shed some uh, jewels of wisdom in terms of how we manage this business and how should we go forth in this post-COVID um, pandemic period? And what are some things we can continue doing to grow? Well, well I wanted to share a couple of thoughts uh, before I get to that. One of that I completely understand what Mike is talking about in terms of the strain, the absolute financial strain and burden of producing content on your own. Because apart from, you know, practicing law, I also do operate as a creative in my own right and produce my YouTube series. Currently, we have 14 episodes, which is featured in three different countries across the world, Trinidad, Barbados Carnival, and LA Carnival. It's hosted on YouTube, and largely I invested in that show myself with family injection of capital. And I completely understand what Mike is saying in that the first global company that ever approached me to invest in a Caribbean show which featured Caribbean pioneers was a LA-based company, Paul Mitchell. So I completely agree with the question of companies uh you know on the ground floor in Trinidad and Tobago across the world agencies government agencies you know um just looking on and seeing what are people doing how can we get involved and how can we assist them to get to the next level i think there's a difference though between going with uh which is what a lot of artists do they sort of vision sell to a corporate agency and expect somebody to build a product for you but I think if you have built to an extent and you can show a return on investment and you can show the value in what, what you are attempting to do and how it is going to shed light either on the region, either on a particular problem, that there definitely ought to be um, a bigger, you know, sort of investment in products like that. I have received a lot of investment. This year, for the first time, Trinidad Tourism came on board uh, KFC came on board, but this is after years and years, you know, three years of the show. And, and also a lot of people did not understand an online show and how, you know, investing in and having logo placement, brand placements and whatnot in a YouTube show could reap value for them. But COVID has actually been a great uh, learning curve and people have had to learn very quickly the value of social media and digital media and so on. So I think in many ways COVID has transformed uh, the world, the way that we do business. It's, uh, it's forced a lot of traditionalists and dinosaurs to rethink the way that they operate. And to answer your question in terms of how do we, what are some you know, uh, offerings that I could share? I wanna go back to the point that I was making before and that I really think a lot of this in terms of how we market our culture, how we generate revenue for ourselves and how we protect our culture has a lot to do with who we have and who we allow to have a seat at the table. And like I said, the people that are generally at the helm of these organizations are 
artists who have, you know, given their lives and sweat, blood and tears, uh, which is good, but not an artist paired with a businessman and not a businessman paired with an intellectual property attorney or a copyright attorney. And that pairing is what is needed to get us to really kind of generate some moves. We would not have lost Pan if we had people who understood culture and business and patent law. That's a very prime example, I think. And um, that's kind of what I wanted to say, that it's understanding the linkages and also not being afraid, I think, of change. I think that a lot of the organ people at the helm of these cultural organizations often view um, maybe persons who are younger sometimes as a threat or persons who think differently as a threat, as opposed to saying, let me work with someone who understands digital media. Let me work with somebody who understands law and understands business and bring them in as opposed to, um, you know, it not as, as opposed to not being welcoming. And I think that's why we aren't sort of getting further in our, many of our plans and so forth, because we don't have a continuity plan. It's the same people year after year after year without having any sort of, you know, any sort of discussion or business plan in terms of where are we going next and who then can come in and take over. Okay. Jesse, I think you wanted to, you were shaking your head in agreement with what Carla was saying. Thank you, Carla. Thank you yeah. for that. I mean, very, very good point, especially when it comes to having the, the talent partnered with the business side of it because oh. that is, trust me, that is probably the most important thing, understanding how the business works. And um, having that partnership, I think that structure will help us to really um, move our culture forward. So that is the point that I really was agreeing with um, what Carla was saying here. Yeah, because I think the challenge is that we have, like I was saying earlier, uh, Jesse, on with, with artists, not just in, across the Caribbean, when you look at the persons who are at the helm, which is very few. We have a majority of people are aspiring artists, and there are few people who are actually at the top of their game, and you can say they have achieved global success. And there's a reason for that. So when you look at their team, their team members are made up of people with specific skill sets. There are accountants, there are business people, there are lawyers who all do their job. And I think that that area is not promoted of enough in the region. Um, even amongst, you know, as a, even, a, even the persons who are at the helm sometimes don't encourage the younger ones to invest in that aspect of their business. So that's why there's so few of us who are actually able to succeed. And I've spent a lot of my time over the years going to conferences all over the world. I've gone to American Bar Association conferences, music conferences that, you know, Diddy hosts this called Revolt Music Conference. Many things have gone to Island Records, and they all say the same thing, that Caribbean people are some of the most talented. Trinis, we are diverse, we have Chucky, Soka, Soka, all these various things. But what we have in common in the Caribbean is a, a great degree of disorder disorganization and nobody yeah. wants to invest in an artist no matter how talented you are how good looking we are Trini love to say you're the best looking woman and this nobody cares if you're going to invest in you if you're going to be a liability down the line you don't understand whether you own your masters you don't understand whether who wrote the lyrics who didn't own this nobody wants to put that on an endorsement deal, a distribution deal, if it's just going to cause legal problems and back and all, as we say, down the line. And that is our biggest problem. We are our own problem. And that's yeah. what I want to leave you all with, because I'm very late. <laughs> but I thank you for this opportunity. And I, I need to get on to the next thing. But let us continue these discussions. And I would like to take the ambassador up on his offer to work more closely with organizations. And I will certainly um like to have his contact details because there are many different ideas that I have, which I think I would love to discuss with him uh, as we move forward. Thank you, Carla. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Nice. All right. 
And we will certainly make available. We'll certainly make available everyone's contact with each other because it's not about us saying that we are the center. It's about us making those connections. And that's what this town hall is about. Us connecting with other people that we may not have been connected with before that's going to help bridge the, the, the this culture in the diaspora. So thank you very much, Carla. Thank you. Bye. Carla. I think we, I followed you at a event hosted by the ICS during the legislative week earlier this year. Um, I think you might have been on a panel there um, with Dr. Claire Nelson. Um, um, I'm not, I, I don't There was some people who did a presentation and I was... Uh, you know, is this during the COVID? I did the most recent presentation I would have done would have been a carnival discussion on um, oh, where yeah? you go... Was it with the OAS or with the IECS? Oh, yes, yes, with the OAS. There's been a lot of panels. Yeah. There's been yeah. a lot of panels. Yes, I, I did do a panel with the OAS and the Prime Minister of St. Vincent was at it as well. Ah, Is that correct, the one? Correct, correct, yes. Yes. That's part of my job here, especially in a COVID. I have the opportunity to tune in and pick up um, nuggets such like what you shared at that um, session. So thanks so much. We'll be in touch. And I okay. have been working with the organizations. I just want to work more, and more importantly, get the organizations to work together. Yes. yes. Thank you. I, I have a question for you, uh, Mr. Ambassador. Sure. So we have a college boy, Jesse, here on the line. I spoke before about uh, supporting the voices on the radio, yes. you know, the media voices. It's media that helps us to market. Yes. And we sort of the same mentality that they have towards artists People, the, the, the community has towards media. So um, we have college boy Jesse on here, and he is international soccer monarch, Ruby soccer monarch. I know. I know. And he can only do national right now. Right. right. How does the government support these artists outside of the competition? How does the government support them in the diaspora? So now he, you know, he did a great video. I wish we could show it on here so we could look at it for a minute, you know, um, talking about, you know, oh, he spent all these years and boom, COVID happened. And now he's unemployed. How does the government support the, the artists who get titles that help bring recognition to the, the, the greatest show on earth, as uh, Tiger said earlier on? How do they support them? Right, so... I think that was the master stroke that the prime minister was trying to, to well, will, I believe, accomplish by connecting culture and tourism. You know what tourism is. That's the mm -hmm. doorway to the world for people to come see or for people abroad to hear. And um, I would love to be able to make contact with, with uh, Jesse. And let's, let's have the conversation. There, there are several channels. You might know that the Ministry of Trade and Industry and, and Minister Gopi Schoon, and I'm happy she's back in that portfolio. Um, they've been working at creating some, some um, well, improving music um, entrepreneurship. Let me use that too. Mm -hmm. That is how the government has been supporting, finding and identifying talent like Jesse and seeing how um, by exposing your talent and giving you platforms to mobilize your talent and monetize. Mobilize and monetize it. Don't just mobilize it and leave it there. And this is where I think the point that Carla was making, you see, it goes back to organization. How deep is your organizational capacity? Once you build organizational capacity, it's like your lungs and heart again. If you have lungs that are working well, when it's time to run, ask, ask, ask Mike, he was an athlete. When it's time to run, uh, time to run, you perform. So whatever you produce, Jesse, after you have that organizational capacity, boom, you launch it and it goes wherever. And barriers are more and more being lowered. They have to make way for talent. So um, please, please share my contact information with Jesse. And Jesse, I look forward to hearing from you. But there are several um, initiatives I know yes, of at the Ministry of Trade and Industry. You understand? 
I know. You've heard of music TT, right, Jesse? Hello? Yes. yes. Right. Have yeah. you ever met with the, with anybody at Music TT? Yes. You have? Yes. Um, I can't remember the lady's name. Uh, Red Skin. The, um... Involved. Right. So let's yeah. have a conversation and... and, and it's just a matter of connecting art, artists to the resources or the channels that exist. And yeah. we'll, as the artists speak more with the policy makers, they will discover, mm -hmm. okay, well, yeah, we didn't think about this. So they will now have to design ways to get things done. So, okay. Thank, you. Thank you. Um, Joanne, yes, based on the conversation that has been going on here, I, I think you would be able to really drop some nuggets in there because you've had the experience on both sides. Um, how, what are some things you two can do or will be willing to do to help promote this art form some more? I know you're a hard worker. I have been doing, I am still the general secretary of the Orlando Carnival Association. I am also involved in Carnival here in South Carolina. Mm -hmm. I journey to LA Carnival and judge. So I, I support and promote in whatever way I can all the time, nonstop. So I, that, and that's when I, um, artists tend to laugh at me because when I have on the umbrella of the promoter of the mm -hmm. Carnival, when I'm on the, that umbrella, so I do support in whatever way, and I am, and I was happy when I heard um, the honorable ambassador said just now about trade and industry, because I too I could drop the um like you were saying just now to drop the little bombs when because there is also I'm happy to hear him say in a forum like this reach out to me and I would be responding because I work for a pharmaceutical company. And my first love is Trinidad. We know our medical system in Trinidad. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm like, You notice there's a Spencer in my name? In fact, <laughs> it's... I know your name very well. I know, well. I know your name. that after. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wrote to the Consul General in Miami. I wrote to them in Washington. Nothing. The company that I work for is willing and ready to donate, not sell, donate medication to Trinidad. I wrote how many letters? We're still waiting. So I was really happy to hear when he said that. So I will make sure that I do it again, but I'm not going back to my company because I don't want to look stupid again. But I did it on, so this is just, we and, me and culture is just one part of it. Trinidad and Tobago is my first love. That's who I am. I argue with them every time I go home and ask for a passport as long as I'm talking like this. I don't need a Trinidad and Tobago passport. This is who I am. This is who I am 100% plus VAT. A Trini. A Trini. <laughs> 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 so it is, and for me, it is not just our, not just our culture. It is every aspect of it. I used to revel in when, in our own little way, when we celebrated Baptist Liberation Day, when we celebrate Indian Arrival Day, every one of the holidays, and that has stopped. That used to happen in the office of the, in the consulate, in the embassies. All of these things have been cut out. Am I? No, am I? Speak, no, am I speaking? They're very you? accurate. And there are, in fact, resource constraints that did affect that. What, what we have been seeking to do, in fact, this year, before COVID, April 4th, working with April 4th. Huh? April 4th. It was supposed to be April 4th. This was in Miami. 
in the law in in Washington. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right. So you oh, know, you're right. You're right. You know, Jillian. Yes, right, I okay. do. So there you go. And then came and then, then came COVID. So we are unable to host lots of things at the mission, and you all know what our public purse position has been uh, immediately post 2015. I think, thank God, even amidst COVID, um, God has been good to us as a country, uh, as a nation. So we have been finding ways to work with those groups in the diaspora. Yes, I go now when it's, it's time to meet our our, our Muslim brothers, I go to the mosque with them. Mm -hmm. I, I've been doing that for the last two or maybe three years, right? Mm -hmm. And a and, and couple of folks from the embassy will go with me. So so let's talk. Let's uh, listen. Uh, okay. I agree where things have not uh, been maintained and the engagement has not been as strong as it could be. We do have constraints, but that does not at all, in my view, that, I mean that it must cause our commitment to engage to be diminished. Many of my meetings with the diaspora are after work, after I leave the OAS and so on. And almost every evening, I'm chatting with some diaspora group somewhere. That has been my life for the past two years. Mm -hmm. And I never had an opportunity before um, now to have this engagement with your group, um, with, with the TTIBC. I look forward to doing that. I look forward to bringing you into that network. And let's build the organization. We could get things done. I speak about an interdependent, integrated diaspora community. Only when we create that, one, we will rejuvenate our diaspora community. You and I know that there are second and third generation Trinidadians some of them never went to Trinidad and Tobago yet, but they want to behave like if they were Trinidad. But that's what I said earlier to those who are Trinidad who think they're Trinidadian. But really untrue. Yes. Yes. What do you mean? I have one. Yeah. They want to claim their right. They want to claim their right to their heritage. That's and right. we have a responsibility that's right. to ensure that they can. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Agreed. Okay. With that said, we have, it's 9.30 now, we've been on the, in this conversation for like the past two hours. Um, and we will continue it. I want final words from everyone in terms of uh, post-pandemic, what is our pledge to moving the culture forward post-pandemic? I'll start with Professor Ian Smart, then we'll go to... Um, uh, Mike Andrews. Uh, we'll go to college boy Jesse. I went to the Calypsonians afterwards, and we're going to uh, Tyrus, and then we'll close out uh, with the ambassador. Post pandemic, what is our pledge to moving this culture forward? Um, first of all, I want to thank you for this 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 opportunity because I, I tend to live in the in the ivory tower. And it's important uh, to come down to the real world. I've always been inspired by um, by Professor by um, Ambassador um, Philip Spencer's approach. Uh, it was last year that 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 Christmas thing. I heard him talk. Uh, I was, Aram Pan and Kaiso. What was it called? What? Aram Pan and Kaiso. Yeah, yeah. It was. I was very impressed with that. That that um that, that yeah, and and what what he what he stressed today was um as as you always stress was organization and the, the importance of organizations and and, and, and the energy that that you all of the all of manifested to me is really um is really important um i i don't know if i can come out too much out of the ivory tower but uh, but uh, but it's important to, um to connect it connect it to the to the real world the world that you all are in uh, I, I was really impre more impressed with, with carla She's my, she's my niece, and, and and I heard about her, but I didn't realize how just how just how dynamic she is. You know? and, and 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 your those four ladies um, well, we, every, every everybody's connected, right? Because you're you're, yeah. you're you know, <laughs> six degrees. Yeah, 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 yeah. But but one but just one thing I'd like to I'd like to think if if we could to refine our our, our, our better our 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 our, 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 our oh. Mm -hmm. or, or direction. If we could probably think a little bit, uh, add something to the concept of diaspora, because uh, <clears throat> because you know we are 1.3 million people. Um, 
the the 200 million um 200 million people, african ancestral people in latin america 200 million in latin america who speak spanish and portuguese <clears throat> um i'm i'm married to one of them <laughs> um so 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 from panama so so you know you know we have th th those are those are possibilities that we can help us to to to, to, to refine to make us more more effective to more effective so this, this is an idea i'm throwing out and um um to the idea of, of again diaspora better and best better understanding of who we are of who we are so we can be more effective and we can profit more from our we can we can we can we can we can help we can work more closely with with Carla and that group of um you know the people who are who are who the millennials are the millennials yeah 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 thank you so much That's professor right. Mike Andrews yes um post COVID yes first we have to understand and realize and cherish what we have calypso music soca music is one of the sweetest music in the world. Yes. Is one of the first music that would get you tapping your foot, mm -hmm. that is swinging and swinging your waist. We have that. This is Trinidad and Tobago. It is spread throughout the Caribbean, all over the world. People are adapting part of Calypso in their songs because the beat is just so nice. We can sing on any topic. Sometimes I could choose a theme and do a whole program just finding songs on that theme. You've seen me do that. Um, so understand that we have something that is great, it's marketable, and do the things necessary to market it and get it out there. They, they, some people complain about the German wine, but there are some sweet German wine that everybody loves. <laughs> some people say Calypso is dying, meaning the old traditional art form. It is not. There's some heavy hitting, tight Calypsos out there uh, in, in the genre of, 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 of what Tigris is talking about, and say Calypso, it is not dying, but it's just that, you know, we have to bring back the melody and the niceness, the topics of, of, of our Calypso music and market it and push it. The other thing is diaspora. Throughout my career, even before I started radio, I've been pushing this idea of marketing Trinidad and Tobago to the diaspora. As I said before, I've met with various ministers. I've met with various officials from the tourism boards. Um, prime ministers have come here, Mr. Pandey, Mr. Manning. Well, Dr. Rowley hasn't been here as yet, but he has talked about connecting with the diaspora. And Mr. Ambassador, I, I'm glad to hear that you're doing so many things to connect the diaspora, but the Trinidad and Tobago government has not. They have spoken about it. They've come to, to Miami and Houston and New York and spoken about it, but they have not had a strong diaspora network hooked up with Trinidad and Tobago government. Look at Jamaica. Jamaica has a strong diaspora. They meet in Jamaica, they bring down the various members of the committees into Jamaica, and they push Jamaica with the diaspora. All right? We have Tobago, we have Trinidad that can be marketed, marketed to the diaspora. We have a lot of people up here with disposable income, elderly people that have never been to Tobago. And it's not like we no longer want to go back and stay by Tanti and sleep on a bed with a cock crowing in the morning. Oh. We've gone past that with the dogs barking outside. We want to go back home and stay in a nice hotel. Yeah. So why don't the hotels market themselves to the diaspora here in, 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 in the U.S. and all over? The diaspora, market themselves, market Tobago. Take a nice trip on the, on, on the ferry from Port of Spain, one of the most lovely views is going to the Bocas and hitting them waves and going up to Tobago. It's not marketed. So, Mr. Ambassador, I'm glad I will only reach out to you and push my ideas for marketing to the diaspora. Post-COVID, that is what we have to do. Get a stronger link with the diaspora. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mike. Thank, Thank you, you for that. that. Jesse? Yes, um, post-COVID. Um, in regards to the creative side of it, um, I, I'm involved in a, a young group of artists, um, the younger generation of Soka, and we had this challenge for so many years in regards to ensuring that our art form is more um, acknowledged globally. And 
the way that we want to counter that is the way that we put out music. We want to ensure that there's more music um, that we create and we produce more music throughout the year apart from just creating seasonally for, for our carnival. Um, I know that there are soca music and calypsos that other Caribbean um, islands would produce also. But us here in Trinidad, we want to also be able to put out soca throughout the year so that at least home, the music could be loved and appreciated home throughout the year. And with that being done, to even the diaspora across, across the world would also have enough material, material to share our culture um, globally. So from the creative side of things moving forward, um, we just want to create the music that our Caribbean people and our Trinbegonians love. Um, and also create that structure because you look at reggae, we look at other genres and they have a structure that also sells the culture across the world. So we're trying to somewhat create that structure because we don't have the structure right now in the industry. So we're trying to find that structure that could properly market our culture, Calypso, Soka and Chutney um, at a very high standard globally. So. Moving forward post COVID, that's that's our ambitions. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jesse. Uh, Tigress. Tigress. Joanne mm -hmm. Rowley remains committed. I remain committed to Trinidad and Tobago. And this is not just culturally only. Because there, while we are while we might be on the topic of culture for right now, there are so many other things that we can do. There are so many other things because um, the president is not an artist, but I know she's willing and ready to commit herself to do whatever towards the elevation of Trinidad and Tobago and to better our own country and to see how we elevate ourselves out here. The Sankofa bird is a bird that I really, that I have a painting of it in my house. Why? Ah, we cannot want to go forward if we don't know where we came from. Right. That's right. And I, it's, and while uh, Ms. Harris said earlier that sometimes who at the helm, they, but if you don't know, and this is what you know, and you, you can't sit on the outside and say it, you have to come in on the inside. Mm -hmm. And people who you would look at me and say, maybe I'm the older one, I want to sit back and sing with conviction David's rather words. Take me calypso music to the mountains and let every drop of earth hear when I sing. Outer them barrack yard calypso rising. I want rising, to rising, rising. with conviction. Yes. <laughs> and say, we know, like take for example, college boy Jesse, it is an honor to sit down with him because I haven't met him. I was home for carnival and run out, and I was not there for Soka Monarch. And I must take this time also to congratulate him. And, to, and it is also applaud him too, to see the initiative he's ready to take. So how do we move this forward? How do we move us forward? That's what we have to do. How do we move us forward? The, nurse, the Nurses Association, I know they do a lot with Trinidad also. Alicia has just started her her event. We were going to Trinidad this year because we sell emancipation in Trinidad. We had almost a charter to go down for emancipation. So it's not just culture. We have so many things to work on and so many things to fix. So I am happy and I thank you all for inviting me here. So post-COVID, I remain committed. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. I remain committed. Thank you, thank you. And Ms. Ambassador, we leave the last word on you. <laughs> Post-COVID, how do we move this thing forward? You said you gave us some good nuggets. And I wanna, before you start, I wanna thank you for coming on this slide uh, in such short notice. It is a pleasure and an honor to have a representative from the Trinidad and Tobago government sitting with us. It is a pleasure and honor. So thank you for being committed to doing this with us. Thank you. Take your mic off mute. Yes, thank you very much again for the invitation. I've thoroughly enjoyed being here. 
you know, there's a difference between inspiration and motivation. Mm -hmm. Bottom line is that when you're inspired, you'll never be the same again. And this was one of those moments for me this evening. Oh, yeah. I'm going to I'm going to make two commitments post COVID. One at the level of institutional level of commitment, and the other at the individual level. Mm -hmm. When I became the ambassador, I in fact had been researching in another dimension of my life um, diaspora contributions to development in certain countries. When I came here, I was given four big priorities. One of those was deepening diaspora engagement. You know what I realized? That that priority would provide a platform from which I could succeed at the other three. My approach, therefore, and the commitment that the mission, the embassy, I'm sure, will be able to, to pursue post-COVID is that we will galvanize, organize, and mobilize a diaspora across the United States that's built on interdependent cooperation, influential consolidation, integrating rejuvenation, and institutionalized organization. I know that I have to say organization again for the night. Because our diaspora is strong and ready and willing, but those are the areas that we need to work at to build our diaspora. Um, we have been doing that. Those, what I read to you there was mm -hmm. from a symposium with diaspora organizations on the 20th of October, 2019. That's the commitment going forward. Okay. So you could, you could listen out to, and we will pursue you. We won't let you get away. At the individual level, and Professor Smart, um, I'd probably call on you with this. People know me as a soldier, but my first degree is in economics. And then my postgrad work was in international relations. And there's something called official development assistance. I think it's time for us to critique that again. And my individual commitment is to advance a concept called diaspora development assistance. That's the commitment I make to you at the institutional level of the embassy mandated by public policy to engage you. And as an individual, you'll be reading and hearing and hopefully joining in advancing the cause of diaspora development assistance. This week coming, a team, a core team, still growing, of people in the diaspora with ICT expertise, experience, and exposure will meet with the leadership of the Ministry of Public Administration and Digital Transformation. Because, you know, that's a new ministry, well, the new cabinet, public administration now has digital transformation. And post-COVID, Trinidad and Tobago needs to get ready and catch up and be on par with the digital economy and digital age. Mm -hmm. In early August, a group of diaspora educators delivered a two-day webinar to 900 participants, including about more than 600 from Trinidad and Tobago. And right now, the Ministry of Education, its um, curriculum development, schools broadcast unit, UE's ECCE, and, and now other schools are reaching out to them to get rebroadcasts of the webinar. Our diaspora has done an excellent job at all the excellent charity projects you do. And we've had a strong social bond. I want to challenge the diaspora post-COVID to do two things. In addition to your charitable work, work for change in Trinidad and Tobago. The change we want. Mm -hmm. And two, in addition to, the, to keeping the social fires alive, let's become more strategic mm -hmm. and enable what the diaspora does in its relationship with Trinidad and Tobago to not just be transactional, 
that's how we don't get past the small gains. And let's focus on making a relationship with the diaspora that's transformational for our country. Thank you very much for inviting me. This was yeah, a yeah. great way to celebrate my independence and it was, <laughs> here and it was I mean, amidst COVID, I was really inspired by the comments from Professor Smart, from, from Tigress, um, Jesse, um, Mike, Mr. Andrews, I need to call you. I think there's some fires we might have to share. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, to all of you, the leadership of BBC, thank you so much for connecting. I will continue to be responsive so that you called yesterday and I'm here today. Be prepared for that. Um, yeah. We'll continue for as long as I'm here. God bless you. I can expect yeah. some meds to go to Trinidad. <laughs> You're expecting some meds to go to Trinidad. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'll talk to her. I, 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 listen. I listen. I listen and okay. I listen get things done. I'm waiting. Thanks very much again. Thank you. So here's the... Uh, our president, Francelia Smith, has some closing remarks. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating in this. Thank you so much. Okay, great panel. This discussion was awesome, amazingly awesome. Well, I want to say good night, fellow Trinbegonians. I'd like to take the opportunity. It's a great privilege and honor for me to thank you guys in joining us during our five-day celebration of the 58th anniversary of Trinidad and Tobago. It has been a new experience for all of us, but it has been an enjoyable and progressive experience. Because of COVID, we have had to find new, new ways and a new platform in which we can bring the, this five days event to you. This we found to be very challenging and educational. It just goes to show anything can be accomplished when you are open and willing to try new ideas. As someone on the panel said earlier, and this is what we did. At this moment, I would like to thank the panelists his Excellency, Mr. Anthony Spencer Philip. Philip Spencer. Philip Spencer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just putting my last name there because I'm Francine Smith Philip. Sorry. <laughs> also, uh, Ms. Carla Paris, who have left us. Mr. Mike Andrews, Mr. Ian Smart, and Ms. Joanne Rowley, better known as Tigress. And also we have college boy, Jesse. Thank you so much. Um, You're welcome. I just want to make um, honor one of our members. Um, this member have been with Trinidad and Tobago Independence Board for a long time. It's, um, he have done quite a bit for this group, he have been one of our leaders, one of the person that we go to for help. And he, he just kept his eyes on us to make sure that we did things the right way. And this was very appreciated. We would miss him dearly because he have um, taken up other avenues, other ventures in doing things because his responsibilities lead him in a different direction. Nonetheless, we are going to miss his input. We're going to miss his guidance, but he will always continue to support our, our organization as, a, um, uh, as an honorary member. So to Mr. Cleve Osborne, we want to say thank you so, so much. It is with a hard heart that we accept your retirement, as um, I would say resignation, he retired from the group mm -hmm. and we would miss him dearly, but we love him and we wish him all the best in his endeavors, in his future endeavors, we wish him all the best. He would be there for us and we would always be there for him. Thank you, Cleve. I want to thank the members of the organization, Miss Yvette Bell, who is one of our founders. Yvette have been instrumental 
in carrying this organization on her back from the time it started in 2003. And um, of what you are seeing here today is really a product of Yvette's efforts. So to Yvette Bell, our founder, one of our founder, I thank you so much for the opportunity that you have given us to join this organization. As a matter of fact, Cleve and Yvette were very instrumental in recruiting me into this organization three years ago. And after being with the group for one year, they both was very instrumental in the recommended and um, appointed, well, nominated me as being the president of this group, which was kindly voted on. I accepted the challenge, the challenge, and here I am today. So to Yvette, thank you for your insight for forming such a group. Vanessa Edwards is also um, one of the founders. Vanessa, thank you so much. You are one of the greatest treasurer that this group can have. You keep every penny is accounted for. She knows what, it, what we spend, what we do with it, every single penny. And she's such a really, really good person who is always willing to help out in whatever we need. To um, these three ladies here, our scholarship committee, as you know, we do support um, children from Trinidad and Tobago descendants as we offer them scholarships every year. So we have a scholarship committee, which Clee was very instrumental in us putting together. Maureen is the president of the scholarship heritage um, com um, committee. committee. Thank you so much, Maureen. And we have Alison, school, um, her assistant. And Jillian is our technical person. Jillian, everything technical here that this, what we were able to bring to you tonight, was done by so, Jillian Nigel Smart Nigel. and Nigel John, who is behind the scenes. You're not seeing him, but he's the one that has made this effort and to make it possible for us to do this five days event. Nigel, you are such a blessing and such such uh, a good um, influence on this group. We thank you so, so much. And Elise Cleopatra for one of the movies that was put on. Vanessa, um, Jessica, who is our secretary. I'm sorry I'm going fast, but Jessica, our secretary, she is very, very good, and she's a very young, dedicated student and also employed, but yes, sir, she found a time to be a part of this group. Yes. Um, so Rodney is also one of our new members, but he's also very, very dedicated to make this happen. So to you guys, Thank you so much. This could not have happened without you. And we are looking forward to do this town hall again at a later day because um, the responses, the conversation have been very, very fruitful and educational to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Truly appreciate it. And that concludes our celebration of Trinidad and Five Days of Trinidad and Tobago Independence. Let's all say it together, guys. Happy, Happy Independence. Thank you. 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 Thank you.